Hi friends, I'm here in Colorado and I want to start sharing the Bible study that they actually shared with me while I was here. And I'm going to try to get as many of the Bible studies uploaded, but it's very powerful. I'm sure many of you have read uh, Luke 15 and uh, the parable of the lost son. And when the pastor here did the study, it really blew me away. And I felt it was something that uh, not only was timely for me, but I, I think that uh, will give some of you a different perspective of what this parable is about. Uh, the parable, as it starts out, is um, he then said a certain man had two sons. Now, just real quickly, this whole parable is about us and our relationship with Jesus. It's not it's not just, you know, two sons. It's really about our relationship with the Father. So today I'm going to start off, I'm going to just move ahead and we're going to go to verse 25 uh, because this is going to be uh, something that hopefully you will s see that there is nothing in our own strength, in our own power uh, that can make us righteous that we can do to get into the the into into heaven that we can do to work for salvation so let's go to a verse 25 and it says now the older son there was in the field and he came and drew near to the house and he heard music and dancing and so he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant and he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted lamb. Now, the response of the brother is, but he was angry, and he would not go in. Uh, therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. Now, before we go any further, uh, there are two sons. The one son, if you know the story, uh, left the father uh, wanted his inheritance early, begged for it, and the father gave him his inheritance early. And he, early, and he went out and and he blew blew it all, and he ended up basically in a very bad position. And uh, he recognized that he was in a bad position, and uh, he really wanted to go home. Now the other son, which is this elder son, he was the one who stayed home. He stayed home and did all the right things. He worked in the field. I actually, he actually worked, uh, you know, he, he did, he did the so-called righteous work. You know, he, he stayed home, he served the father. And now remember the father here, this is, this, this reflects us in our relationship with the father. So it, it, it can really apply to someone maybe who's working in the church right now, as somebody who's dedicated their life as a, as a missionary, you know, someone who really looks the look, who is doing, doing God's work, doing the father's work. But you notice his reaction. Uh, you have somebody maybe who has left the church and who hasn't walked the walk, and now they want to come back. They want to come back into the fold. They want to come back into the family. But you see how this elder brother, this righteous brother, reacted. He was angry. He was angry. So just in your own life, have you ever seen anybody react that way? You know, we should be loving towards each other, no matter how far or how bad somebody has strayed. Are we willing to bring them back into the fold? So this is what God is trying to, this is what God is trying to show us here. All right, so now, keep this in the back of your mind. Now we're going to go to Romans 9, verse 30. When they talk about the two sons, we can actually compare that to the Gentiles and the Jews. All right. And we, we are the Gentiles. And if you read 30, it says, what shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. But Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness. Okay. Now I know that's hard to understand, but what that is saying is, we have the lost son, who is the Gentile. What did he do to obtain, to get back into the father's fold, righteousness? He went back home and he was repentant. He was sorrowful. And the father gave him the ring and gave him the robe. He gave him the reward, okay? 
we have the elder son who did everything right. He went to church. He worked, he worked for the Father. He worked for God. The Jews, right? The Jews do everything right. They obey the law. They follow, they follow the Ten Commandments. Uh, they have, you know, all their ceremonial and, you know, they, they do everything, right? But how come they didn't receive the ring and, 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 and the righteousness? Well, listen to this. It says, why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. So what that is saying is, you can keep the Ten Commandments. You can do all the right things, but you're not saved through your faith, through your, through your works. You're not saved by your works. You're not saved by keeping the Ten Commandments. And that's what the Jews did. And what they lacked is that they were seeking it in their own strength. And that when the Gentiles sought it, they sought it through faith. And this is a big thing because there are people out there who think that if they go to church, they keep the Ten Commandments, they do everything right, that they're in, that they have salvation. But it's just like the Jews. They kept the commandments, they did, you know, they kept the commandments, but they didn't keep them by faith. What they, what they left out was the Spirit of God. They sought it in their own strength. And we can't do this without Jesus. See, we have to remember that Jesus fulfilled the law on our behalf. You know, Jesus kept the law perfectly. And we can't keep the law perfectly. And the thing with the law is, the law, if you break it, demands death. It's like when you go before a judge, you know, you break the law and there's the death penalty. What are you going to get? You're going to get death. And it is impossible for us to keep the law. It's just, it, it is. There is no man that is able to keep the law except Jesus Christ. He kept it perfectly. And therefore he became the sacrifice for us. He took the death penalty for us. Remember, so God so loved the world that whoever believes in him shall not perish. And because God offered his perfect life and an atoning death, God has given us the gift of life. So you have the elder brother who's the Jews. That's who they represent. It re represents the Jews of old. It rep represents that religion. And who think that good behavior and perfection is the key to salvation. And if you think about it, even the angels fell. Even the angels couldn't be perfect. And that's why we need a Savior. So that is my message for today. Uh, you know, just remember that um, trying to keep the commandments... I wrote down here, um, so likewise, when you have kept all the commandments, just remember, you are still unprofitable. We are not saved by keeping the commandments. We still need to be perfect. And, but because of what Jesus did, because of his perfect nature, we are now saved or can be saved. So that was one of the sermons that I received here. Uh, we, we do it every morning. We study Luke 15 and it was a beautiful message. It's a beautiful message and I hope you take it to heart and you pray about it and you recognize that if you're if you're a churchgoer or, or whatever you're doing uh, or you maybe you don't even go to church and you got this belief that you have to spiffy up and you, you have to make yourself better before you get, come to the church or you come to the cross. You don't have to. You come as you are. You come as you are. There's no way that you're going to be able at this point sometimes. How can I explain? There's no way that you're going to be able to clean yourself up good enough to stand before God. 
And that's what Jesus does for us. He washes us clean, and we can be dirty as mud. We can be dirty as garbage. And it's him that cleanses us. And if you have fallen into the trap of going to church and you think that you have the right church, you've got the right religion, and you're doing everything right, and you're looking all spiffy, and you're working in the stoop kitchen, or even if you're a missionary and you're doing all these missions, and yeah, you're looking good, not in your own works. Not in your works. Your religion is not going to save you. And this is what they preach here. Your religion is not going to save you. Your doctrine is not going to save you. The, the fact that you go to church every Sunday or Sabbath and you give your tithe, it's not going to save you. The saving is in the blood of Christ and what he did on the cross. Pretty powerful message. So, all right, I'm going to post this for you, friends, and hopefully I'll have another one soon. And God bless you, friends. I love you.